Good afternoon, Ike Loners. Um, 2020 hasn't been a whole lot of fun, but one of the fun things that I did manage to do this year is get out on some water in a kayak. Um, and so I decided to model a kayak. Um, and if you're watching this video, it's possible that you have purchased said kayak, the prop. And so I just wanted to present a couple of tips and tricks involved with the prop and show you how to get your character seated quickly using reach targets and then also how to animate quickly using said reach targets. Okay, first off we're going to load in the kayak. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at it and we will see several sub props within the, the kayak including R foot target, L foot target, and butt target. Um, those will help us to get our, our character situated. Then we have a kayak oar, and if you open up that kayak oar, you see R hand target and L hand target. And then finally, there's a kayak interior screen, and that one's turned off. You can see the, the eye, eyeball is closed. If you turn it on, you'll see inside the, inside the, uh, the kayak, it's just simply a black or it's a screen, which you can use when there's water flowing, the water will be inside the kayak because it's not a physics prop. And you can use that if you need to to adjust some of the visibility of the water. I mean, it's really up to you. You may not find it helpful at all, in which case it's closed uh, or it's turned off. Easy to turn off. You don't have to use it. Very low poly. Um, OK, so very quickly, let's get a character loaded in here. I'm going to use in this Example, I like to use Chuck. He's low, relatively low poly. He's a good looking fella. So there he is. He's loaded in. And then um, right off the bat, we're going to go back to scene so we can see all of our targets. We'll go into Chuck's animation panel. We'll go into the edit reach and we'll grab his hips. We'll select the eyedropper and we'll go select the butt target. And if we look, Chuck is just about situated. His back is just about situated well, but his legs are all wonky. Um, that's because his feet are pinned to the floor in this case, but that's okay because we're going to use reach targets on his feet as well. So uh, we'll go to back into Chuck's reach target and we will select the left foot, use the eyedropper, L foot target, and then we... It's very strange. The um, reach target panel is very wonky these days. See how it closed on me there? Go back into edit reach target, go to his right foot, and we'll select the eyedropper, and we will select right foot target. Okay, let's take a look at him. His feet seem to be pretty well positioned using those targets. Remember, when you use reach targets for positioning a character, you don't change the character, like if he's not adjusted to the seat well, you're not going to change the character. You're not going to push the character around. You change the reach target. So I grab the butt target and then I could pull him forward or back using that, not using the position of the character himself. Okay. If I wanted to change his feet around, if they happen to be sticking out because some characters may be a little different, we can simply change the target. And interestingly, see how his legs will move around and maybe perhaps that's a little more lifelike for you. Okay, so he's relatively positioned. His hands are straight down and they're poking out of the bottom of the kayak, but that's okay because we're going to now attach his hands to the oar. Uh, remember we have the R hand target, L hand target. They're both on the oar. I select Chuck. I go to edit reach target. I'm going to do his left hand first. We use the eyedropper and I grab left hand target. Now different than the feet and the hips, click on the dot 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 for the hands and select reach object and rotation. And that uh, will help him to get positioned with his left hand. Do the same for the right hand. Eyedropper, R hand target, dot dot dot, reach, hand, uh, reach object and rotation. Okay, let's see how he looks. He's getting there, but his hands aren't really gripping the uh, not really gripping the oar at this point. And remember, if you need to change the position of the hands, you will use the position, the R hand target, L hand target, and you can use either the, um, the arrows or you can adjust the hand in this way. But he needs to be gripping it. And to do that, to actually put a grip on it, we're going to go into his motion layer. And he has a little hand panel here, and we'll simply grab the palm, pull down on both hands, I hate that the um, the bones are so large. It makes it very difficult to see. That's not bad. 
Now, Chuck should be positioned pretty well as a default because that's who I used when I set up these targets. So that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now Chuck is positioned. Let's quickly go and we'll grab some water. We'll use some default water and a default sky. Um, bum, bum. Water. Oh, custom, sorry. Oh, water, there we go. Uh, deep flow is fine. <laughs> Looks like Chuck is about to drown there. So the water's a little high. We'll grab a sky and then we'll fix it. Okay. So yeah, Chuck is uh, going down with the ship here. All we're going to do for this, because the, the kayak is positioned at zero, zero, the water's a little high for that. So go into my scene, select my water, and over here on the height, we're going to drop it down until it looks, let's see, until it looks a little better. It's getting there, but not quite where we want it. Okay, that's not bad. That's pretty good. You, you might go higher or lower, but see, here's what I was talking about. If I hit play, we can see the wave, and you can see some of it inside here. Now, that's a big wave. I would want my wave to be a little smaller. Wave size. That's a little better. Okay, there. If you don't, in this instance, let's see what happens. We'll use our interior screen. Sorry, turn it off. Turn on the interior screen, and now it's it's black in there, which will keep the reflection of the, the water. And that may be preferable to you. If it's not, again, you can just turn it off. You could do some, some of your filming from this level or such. Okay. So, here we go. We have Chuck. He's positioned in our kayak. The waves are going the wrong direction. I like to usually animate the waves, not the boat, unless you have um, land going by. So let's see if we can change the position of the water. Not the position, but the, the direction of the water. Here it's at 90. Um, I think it's a matter of adding... Well, let's just see. If we go 180, I think it's going to be wrong. Yeah. 90, 180. Uh, 180 plus 90 is da, 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 270. There we go. Now the waves are going against our kayak, so it starts to give us some kind of illusion of movement. And you could use your use your um, camera to adjust the to make it give more of an illusion of, of movement. But that's up to you. You could actually move the kayak as well. But in this case, I've set it so that the waves are now moving against the kayak. That's what we wanted. And you can do several other things. You can change the clarity of the water so you can see more or less. But right now, we just want to worry about the oars. So, animating the oars. He is, Chuck has his reach targets. We're going to grab the oar. And I'm going to just, oh, look at that. See, now Chuck is moving with the oar. And that's very good to see. Um, when you're rowing, you got to think there's probably about four different points of animation. Um, when you dip your one side into the water, then you pull it back, and then you basically flip the other side into the water and you pull it back. So four particular points. And if I think about it, it's probably about a second as you pull your oar through the water. Whereas when I'm flipping sides, I would say it's a little bit less than a second. Now I have my timeline to show frames and a second of 60 frames. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start at the beginning with him, his oar in the water. We'll flip it into the water, and then we're going to, oops, control Z. Let's set our rotation to uh, parent rotate, or into the water, and push it forward. And we'll start right there. Now I'm going to go, he's going to pull through the water in one second. So at the 60, we go down, what's the effect? Kayak war. Du, du, du. There it is. Okay. And let's make our timeline a little larger. So, at 60. Now we're going to pull it back, and you, all you got to do is just push that right through there until you feel like he's pulled back far enough. And then to flip sides, like I said, it's a little bit less than a second, so we're going to go 40 frames from here, which is going to put us at 100. And I'm simply going to flip sides. 
All right, now he's on the other side, and now I need 60 frames to pull through. That's going to be 160. And I simply pull it back, like said. And then he's going to come back to this point, the very beginning. Now that gives us four little points on our animation line, and all I'm going to do is copy them. I'm going to move forward. Let's see. I can move. Oops. Make my timeline a little smaller there so I can see. Now, moving forward 40 seconds or 40 frames from 160 puts us at 200. Okay, and let's see if how that works. Bump, bump, bump. Pulling forward, pulling forward, and boom. Look at that. And just like that, we have begun to put together a very quick animation of Chuck rowing. Now let's watch it. It's got these weird little pauses in it, right? Let's take a look at the at the transitions. I'm going to highlight my keyframes and go to transition curve presets. It uses this default which has a little bit of the ease in and ease out. I think tend to think that the linear is a little bit better in this case. So I've changed them all to linear. And if we look at, uh, bah -bah. oops, that's fine. If we look at, let's change it to time so I can see how much time we have. We have six seconds of rowing. If you need more than that, we're going to simply copy it. You can um, you can do a collect clip on it or whatever you like. But this is just a very simple way to do some rowing, right? Okay, good. So that's going to be enough for me for now. Um, any other quick little things, you know, as he goes through, a lot of times when you're rowing, you tend to look at your, uh, you tend to look at the oar as you're going. We could do this as a prop puppet. Might be a way to go. Let's see if we can set him up to do a quick motion puppet animation. Oh, not motion puppet, sorry, direct puppet. I'm going to grab his head. We're going to do only the rotation, screen-based. And he's going to, let's preview. He's looking over there. Now he's over here. Over here. Over there. All right. Okay. Okay. And that, that would be a nice, we can even record it. Okay. go. Groovy. Taking a look at it. Now his, his head is moving around a little bit. He's starting to look a little more lifelike. I like it. Um, one of the other things that I thought I might show you, which is kind of fun, um, I, in one of my examples, I added uh, the flick water particle effect. In order to do that to the ore, because what I was thinking is as the ore comes out of the water, you have water on the ore. Um, there's a lot of water in the flick water default, so you have to tune it down. Um, what I did was I just attached little props to each end of the ore and then um, turned on the flick water particle effect and added it to each one of those. Um, I don't think I'm going to go into that because uh, you would have to have the uh, popcorn effects 40 to have the flick water but it is something that i have added to some some good use in um with this prop but i think that's enough for now um that's probably more extensive than i needed to be <laughs> but uh have fun i'm glad you uh i'm glad you purchased the kayak prop i hope it does quite well for you and i hope you have fun filming with it okay so happy filming